the Paul Leslie interviews. We're at an undisclosed location with Mr. Leon Mobley. He's going to tell us a little bit about his life and his music and his soul. So welcome, Leon Mobley, to the program. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, for some of our listeners that may not know who you are, would you tell us a little bit about where you came from and how you got here today? When I was in my mother's womb, I started playing drums. That's the way she tells the story. She bought a drum set for me when I was four, and that was in Boston, Massachusetts, where I grew up. And I started studying drums with Baba Tunde Olatunji, a master drummer from Nigeria at the Amalu School of Fine Arts. And also I studied traps with Steve Ambush and Max Roach. And from there I went to do television program. I was on Zoom. Uh, children's program on PBS, Emmy Award winning, and I did Broadway, understudied Ralph Carter in Raisin, and always have had a urge to move to California to pursue my career in the entertainment field and acting and different things as well. And I got out to L.A. and I met a drummer in a dance class with Russell Clark, who did a lot of choreography for movies and Madonna, and this gentleman's name was Rock Dedrick. And he was the drummer with Ben on the first album, Welcome to the Cruel World, and introduced me to Ben Harper. And I became a member of the band, and the first album, and the second album, and on and on, and here I am today, <laughs> playing with Ben Harper here in Atlanta. All right. Or Athens, I say that. Yes. I, music... I just closed. We're just somewhere in Athens, I say that. <laughs> yeah, so it was somewhere. The music city of Georgia. Mm -hmm. There's so many conga players out there, that, and the ones that, that come to my mind, and I guess it's because they play the kind of music I like. And I wanted to know what kind of what kind of percussionists you look up to. I like like Ralph McDonald, mm -hmm. Count mm -hmm. So tell me what you listen to or admire. Well, growing up, Ralph McDonald was an inspiration for me very much. I mean, he was in the pop scene, had a record out, and it was like. Okay. I also grew up listening to, of course, Olotunji, who had many recordings, who actually brought the drum to America in a large force. Mongo Santa Maria, Cal Jada, Willie Bobo. I used to listen to Fanya All Stars a lot. Listen to, I got into West African drumming through uh, Ibrahim Kamara, who was uh, on Stevie Wonder's recording. I actually had a chance to study with him. And the djembe actually was a so, such a powerful drum that I really gravitated towards it mostly. And I've been known because I have a signature series drum with the Remo Drum Company, the djembe's. So I've been known as a djembe player a lot. But I do play congas and all kind of other percussions, tamarines and timbales and bongos and just an all-around percussionist. And that light, there have, a lot of been, there have been a lot of people who have influenced me, uh, Muyungo Jackson, Bill Summers, you know, just guys that have been in the music scene doing things like with people like Stevie Wonder and in the music genre of like playing with keyboards and bass and things. And it's not strictly drums. Uh, a lot of my music is a lot of mel melodic drums and orchestrated drums. But I do do a lot with, I've worked with Michael Jackson, Mick Jagger, Peter Wolf, Chaka Khan, I played with her one time. I just, the list goes on and on. Quincy Jones, Stevie Wonder. She's been very fortunate and blessed. There's one of your albums that you don't hear many albums like this today, and it's a collaborative effort you did, and it has lots of poetry in it. Right. And I really love it because I like to get the music out there that you don't hear on traditional radio, mm -hmm. and that's why I'm alive. <laughs> so <laughs> tell me about that album. Yeah, that was a project that I did with Umar Ben Hassan of The Last Poets which is a very known group from the early 60s when they were doing a lot of poetry. And they were very, very powerful in their message, which was, you know, revolution, freedom of, you know, of rights of people. And I was very fortunate to listen to them growing up, and they were a very big inspiration to me. So when a friend of mine from uh, Ohio, Carl, Newman um, got us together. It was a wonderful, wonderful project. I had so much fun 
working with him. The way that it happened was he sent me the poetry, and from the poetry I devised the rhythms to give a basis for the poetry so they could have something to stand on. And there's one piece on there called Jimmy's Juju, which is a piece about Jimi Hendrix. And he had, Umar had a big concern about that piece because he had always heard it with like a rock guitar, you know, someone emulating Jimmy. And there's no guitar on it, it's all strictly drums. And he was like, he couldn't believe that I was able to capture the essence of Jimi Hendrix through drums. Hmm. My drum technique that I used is basically the lower drums would devise a bass line, congas would devise like chords, and I would have melodies through bells and shakers, and of course with the lead being on the djembe, but not getting in the way of the vocal because the vocal is primarily the force, and I'm just supplying the force something to stand upon. And it was a great honor to be able to work with Umar Ben Hassan. It's a legend. One of the other legends you play with, and actually a killer band backing him, Ben Harper and the Innocent Criminals. What do you think it is about Ben Harper and his band that makes so many people listen to the words and really just take the music to heart? What do you think it is about the band? Ben is Ben is a wonderful, wonderful person, a very spiritual person, a very... He, he's caring, and that struck me from the beginning when I met him. I saw him coming across the street. It was on our first gig in L.A., and it was just like the energy from him was just positive. And it shows in the lyrical content of the music. I was able to listen to some rehearsal things and earlier things from him before I actually met, so it was a pleasure to actually meet someone who had a heart. I think that the people that you surround yourself with in such a tight setting as we are on the road 18 months, you know, away from our families, uh, we have to be of like minds, of like energies. And I think that throughout the process of forming the band, that was a key that Ben, I think, actually was really looking for in some ways because the makeup of the band is really like we're brothers, you know what I mean? And we all have very like carings, you know, same, similar. I mean, I may be more, I think I'm more radical than anyone else in the band, but that's a, a energy that needs to be present in society, I mean, in some ways. You have to be able to stand up for your rights when it comes time to it. And Ben has always been conscious of rights in spiritual rights and life rights, you know, human rights, you know, it's just very conscious. Mm -hmm. So we have always talked about bringing a positive message to the people and living our lives in a positive way. Really do we get into an argument, it's crazy, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing, I mean, as much time as we spend with each other. But it's our spirits, it's our, it's our love for what we do, how we do what we do. I mean, I love playing my drum. I got fired from all kind of jobs. I just couldn't have that situation. So I think that we are, each one of us are a part of our instrument. It's a part of us, and we speak through our instruments. And with the makeup of the band, we all have the same likeness, like I was saying earlier. So the sound comes out that way. The, the, the music comes that way. A lot of it is provided by Ben. Lyrically, we talk, and musically, we talk, but, I mean, he is Ben Harper, and he does, has his gift from God, as we all do, and he writes beautiful music, and we're able to feel it and apply to it who we are, and he allows that, and I think that's one of the reasons why we're able to go on as we have been 12 years, you know what I mean? And you said that out of the band, you seem to be the most radical one. So how are you, Leon Mobley, the more radical one of the band? Uh, Leon Mobley, let me tell you. Mobley. Grew, yeah, it's okay. Don't worry right. about it. It's the same thing. Leon Mobley was, I grew up in Roxbury, Massachusetts, in Cathedral Projects, the projects, you know what I mean? So that alone, that environment of living in a project and sitting out with 
hundreds and hundreds of different families of all different kinds of, uh, well, I guess we were all kind of like in the financial status of struggling. Mm -hmm. Through the struggle, I've been able to learn of the, the fight of right, whereas some people may already have it, you know what I mean, have the, the ability to do things and go places and see different things. And as I was growing up, it was really rough. I mean, I grew up robbing, picking pockets and stealing, selling drugs. I went through the whole thing that the loopholes that society has been set up for the black youth in this country. Basically, I caught in that trap and was fortunate enough to have recognition of my gift from God, which is my drum, and be able to let that open doors around the world for me that I would not have been able to do. I mean, it's like some children in the ghetto just get trained and, you know, you're just locked into this whole thing, whereas my instrument, my music was able to take me other places that other people haven't been able to see and haven't been able to experience that have been brought up in the society of poverty in America, you know? I mean, it's, you look at things like Katrina and you look at, you know, the riots and all these different things. It's like the, the low end of the totem pole, you know what I mean? It's like we don't get education. You know, I was very fortunate to be in a busing program at the time where they took me out of the project, sent me to the suburbs. So I was able to get a better education. I had a full scholarship to college. You know, so I had an urge inside me. Whereas my mom, who raised four children, my father left when I was 18 months old. That's the way it is in the black family. Hmm. You know, they destroy the family. But my mom, she had a strong will. She was an Orthodox Muslim. She was a Rastafarian. She, you know, when I went to school, I came home from school, we went right into school again. And that was teaching us about Denmark Vesey, Toussaint Overture, Mansa Musa. And these are people who I would have never heard about in a public school. And these are kings and queens that gave me inspiration to know that I can achieve a higher form of just being the slickest cat on the corner with the cleanest clothes and got the most rings and the whole thing and dealing and dipping and smoking and whatever it is. You know, I don't have to be that. I can aspire to be a leader, the president of the United States of America, if I, if I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. That's what my mother used to tell me, you know. So I was very fortunate to have that upbringing. My uncle taught African-American history at Northeastern University, Olona Tuco Dare. And so I had a strong force of who I am, my rights of who I am as an African born in this society, America, mm -hmm. and the struggle and the plight of the African-American throughout the, the society. So mm -hmm. I had to, and I still carry that with me today. I mean, I wear locks, I dress. It's just love mm -hmm. <laughs> in a way. Just, you know, it's being who I am and accepting who I am, being true to myself, loving myself, loving who I am so that I can accept others, love others, whoever they are, and be able to see them for, and accept them, you know, so that we can all get along, you know, be, we'll be a better place. Uh, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm quoting Rodney King, <laughs> you know what I mean, but it's, it, in a way, it's, 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 it's a, it's, it, it is. Yes. We need to all get along. We, we need to accept each other, whether we're white, whether we're Asian, whether we're African, because... My belief is we're all African. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? The oldest bones of man have been found in Africa, so there. What message would you like to send, or do you believe should be sent, with your music? Love. And when I say love, I don't mean in a lust, in a sexual, in a you know, crazy way. I mean, like I was saying, accepting of being free. And I mean, that's my music comes from my heart. When I play, it comes from my heart. So... I want to be able to touch people's hearts. I want people to feel deep inside the trueness. Love is true. Love is, love is, you know, love is free. So I want that message to come across in our music. When I play, I, like I said, it's my whole spiritual being that I want to give to the people. I want them to be able to feel it when I'm angry, when I'm happy, when I'm sad. You know, all the emotions that we go through, 
all these things that are there in the music. I want to be able to communicate to people and really touch them deeply. Hmm. That's 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 my deal. Now, my last question: This program goes out all over the world. What would you, Mr. Leon Mobley, like to say to the world? Well, they say time is what we need. So they say. But time is running and passing and passing and running. So it is very important that we get it right this time because there may not be a next time. Remember, yesterday is history. Tomorrow is the future. It's a mystery. Today is the present a gift from the Most High? Ja Rastafari. Thank you so much. Much love.